Hello and welcome to the Nomadic Women Podcast, a place where we share the voices of nomadic women. We are on a mission empowering women and showing the world that a life outside the box is possible and beautiful. There are so many different versions of nomadic living, stories that inspire us to dream, explore and thrive. Listen in and let's learn and grow together. I am so excited to be introducing our very first guest on the Nomadic Woman podcast. Lumen Grace is a light worker, soul coach, author, creator, nourishing soul with inspiration to rise and shine. She encourages women to live colorful life they are absolutely obsessed with. With books, courses, videos, her soul membership, communities, and speaking engagement, she has helped thousands globally. In December 2001, at 36, she sold it all and moved abroad for a digital nomad life. She's a conduit of divine love and healing commitment to serve the collective. Honestly, I wish I could take credit for this beautiful bio, but all that credit goes to Lumen. And thank you so much for putting the trust into me and being the very first guest on the Nomadic Woman podcast. Hi, from Future Inca. Just a little side note here. I just wanted to let you know that Lumen was calling in from Los Angeles. I think it's very important that we also embrace where everybody's located at the moment on this podcast and in all the hype. I totally forgot to mention that. And as you will probably hear throughout the podcast, she is about to embark after a year-long stay in Los Angeles on another European adventure. And I'm excited to hear from her in a few months, what that was like after the first time she did this thing. And this is the beauty. We can have home bases, we can travel, but basically it's all about finding the places that let you creatively shine. Now, enjoy the podcast. My pleasure. Super exciting to be here with you and good to see you again after such a long time. (laughs) That is true. It has been, what, three years or something like that. Uh, yeah yeah like one no like one and a half probably yeah like Croatia oh my gosh <laughs> yes <laughs> it's been it's been a while <laughs> yeah <laughs> no. um, yeah so because I like to spread a little bit of love and uh, just positivity in our lives I want to start with a question what are you grateful for today oh I am grateful for my health that is the number one thing I'm grateful for in this yeah. moment And I try every single day to make sure that I'm doing something along the lines of movement in order to keep this health as good as possible so I can keep traveling and doing all the work that I need to do. So beautiful. Yeah, I I will share mine as well. I'm honestly grateful for you as well. Um, I think it's Uh just for, like I said before, but for your trust. And I don't think that it's, I mean, we, we spend a few a week together and kept in touch but it's um just shows sometimes how much trust can be built at you know live events and things but i think we'll get to that later on the power in of yeah. all of that um, oh, yes. yeah so i know the the mission of the Mac nomad a woman pa- podcast basically is to also diversify the different types of nomadic what does it what does it mean what is it what does nomadic mean to you Uh, For me, being nomadic means freedom to choose and to navigate the world and life according to my own personal uh, desires. And and I always say this thing, my personal model, make your life a work of heart. So to me, that means, you know, traveling, moving, navigating, building, creating, and just having a good time while we're here here on this earth. That's beautiful. Yeah. Now, to your story. What I love personally most about your story is that although you started traveling as a young woman, your nomadic journey started much later, probably at an age where a lot of people would consider them too old, quotation marks, to start new things. What made you decide at the age of 36 to start exactly in that moment? I think it was starting at that age, it was, it was an itch 
to get back on the road and to actually do something I had always wanted to do my entire life. So I always wanted to have this nomadic experience, but it just wasn't the right season when I was younger or things weren't just lining up to where it was possible to do it the way I truly, truly wanted to. So at 36, after building a business and having the financial means to do so, I said, now or never, let's do this last hurrah, still single, still with no children. Why not do the thing that I've always wanted to do so that I have no regrets? So that's how I ended up starting at 36. That That's very inspirational, though, because I think it's exactly what you just said, that, you know, you're never too old to follow your dreams. And True. sometimes I think we forget that when we're in certain life moments that we can still do it. Maybe not the way we dreamed when we were 21, but it's just a different season and it's a different yeah. journey of it all. Yeah. And I think you can start at any point in time. There's so many people, as you start to look at other people who's, who are doing it, or you come across nomadic communities, you see that people of all ages, all walks of life have chosen this as their, their way of life. And so mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing to see. Yeah. 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 You also mentioned, or when we were talking, exchanging ideas before that, basically, sometimes people also get stuck in the vision of someone else and not your own. And so, That's so true. Yeah. Do you have like a, any advice to the people that are trying to find their own vision like a yeah I think for me what I always teach and just let people know is to start with a clean slate as far as like shutting out the noise of the world whether that's social media travel content whatever it is just take a moment and shut it all out and then come back to center listen to yourself somehow get back to center and the truth of who you are think of moments that lit you up when it came to maybe potential travel or just the way you've always wanted to live let's say um, go back to that and start to feel that excitement again around the potential and the possibilities that is where you should really start that's where I think you should really start and I think that will give you an inclination as far as what will truly work for you and what it is you truly desire because sometimes again you may get stuck and what other people are doing, wanting to either navigate the world, say, in a luxury lifestyle, but you really want to be a backpacker. You know, it's, it's so many variations of the nomadic life. And you can play in between all of them. But I think it's about truly trusting the vision and the comfort level for you. So, yeah, I think that that's I think uh, the awareness is going there a lot more. And I think the collective, but a lot of I feel like. You know, the power within us is not mm -hmm. often maybe seen or you believe you don't have it until you meet other people who either believe in you most of the time, you, someone else will believe in you before you believe in yourself. Or, yeah, that's yeah. so true. Now, we know that this... Um, lifestyle can also be difficult but it can also be beautiful um so what are some things that you have learned as a part of your story because you also picked a country that not a lot of people go to to, to start to start yeah. which yeah, i believe true. you probably picked with throwing a dart at it or a country but you never heard of <laughs> Like, yeah, that's what, what made you do that and take the courage <laughs> in that? But also, um, what did you find there that you didn't expect? Ah, okay, very good. Yes, that is true. So when I was starting my nomadic journey, I decided I did not know I was going prior two weeks prior. So I had to make a decision and pick a country. Mm -hmm. I heard very briefly on a podcast, <laughs> surprisingly, about a little country called Albania. I looked it up very quickly and decided that was the place I was going to start. I had no context aside from booking a ticket, booking a room, <laughs> let's see what happens. So this is very unique, you know, and this is me after selling everything and deciding to leave the USA. So getting there, 
I discovered how, like for me, navigating the world is about courage. Anything in life, any steps that we take are about courageous actions, right? Mm-hmm. And so when I got there, it took me completely like like anybody, getting out of your comfort zone, didn't know the language, didn't know what I would find in this little country, but I trusted that I would be okay for one. And I discovered community. That was really the first place I discovered community of like-minded people, of expats, of locals actually as well. As I was navigating the city and learning, it was, and, and I learned a lot about myself too. So when it comes to how I, how I, how, how powerful I could actually be within myself in making decisions like this and what that truly meant for me in the long run, what it meant for me in the way in which I'm able to teach and share my journey as um, a learning, a learning platform for others, because it's very true. My way of doing things, of selling everything and moving with a single suitcase is not everybody's way. But like you're saying, the truth of the lessons learned, which I've I've shared in one of my books, travel, um, travel with soul, and other different platforms across social media, all the things. I believe that it truly is the best learning scope of just just going and doing. So, yeah, mm-hmm. traveling is true. Or I like the quote, but truly, uh, traveling is the best university you'll ever visit. Mm. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> but I, I really, yeah, I, I think it is, it does take a lot of courage to go to a place you've never heard of. Because, you know, a lot of time we have typical, stereotypical views in our mind. I mean, I was just in Greece for three weeks and it was like you'd seen in the pictures. But Albania is one of the questions you don't, wouldn't really even, I wouldn't know what to expect. So, but <laughs> what I'm actually more uh, want to go back to is what you, you talked about community and how that made you aware how you can share your journey. How did you even go about finding that community in a place where you couldn't speak the language? <laughs> and First online. <laughs> online. So I started online, Facebook groups, and I just started to get out and walk around. And that was something that was part of it. Getting out, having a energy of receptive and openness, I think is also key. So I tend to have a lot of meals with strangers. This is something else that that's probably unique to me. I don't know, but I will start to have meals with strangers when I'm out and about. It just naturally happens. Or sometimes it's super intentional that that is my goal for the day in order to connect with people. Um, When I'm going into shops, I'm having conversations as best I can, even in places where I don't speak the language, there's still some form of communication that allows this uh, connection to happen. But Mm -hmm. yes, online absolutely is where it started. And from the conversations and the in-person meetings, then sprouts more, um, more information about other ways to connect with people. So that's always a beautiful thing. So, yeah. you know, just starting with one thing and let that seed out into other things. So um, also finding activities that you actually personally love is a mm-hmm. great way to meet people that are already doing things that, you know, that you already have something in common with. So for me, actually, before I moved to Albania, again, talking about the starting point, mm-hmm. I knew which gym I actually wanted to go to and I knew which um area I wanted to live in so those are two things that is kind of always important to me Uh, again just because I love group exercise I love group group settings and movement again I'm trying to make sure I'm moving every day and so that was another place and I found some of the best friends in in those settings of things I like to do that's beautiful and I think I think that's an aspect that we sometimes forget or that is maybe perceived that you have to give up everything that you love but you know going to exactly to that to the places that you love and you don't know the capacity of that one person that one connection you make what amazing opportunities will come with it oh yes oh yes that's so true but I am curious you said Mm -hmm. 
that you would sometimes make it as your like daily goal to have a meal with a stranger? Would you go to a restaurant and just be like, hi, can I sit with you? Because I mean, food is a great, you know, it's something we all have in common. We have to eat every day. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah. So I think if there's a, a single person sitting, I, I will approach. Sometimes people have approached me as again, with that open inviting uh, energy saying, oh, hello, how are you? If they're walking in, sometimes we're walking in at the same time as two single people, um, men, women, whatever it is. And it's just like, hey, you want to have a seat and just have a chat? Yeah, I don't know. It just kind of naturally happens. Yeah, no, I think Again, it it's is. not it's not necessarily a daily activity that I mm. do, but I do make it a, a, an effort and a point to connect. Mm. And sometimes I never see the people again. Sometimes we exchange great information. And again, I just love connecting with people. So mm. I think it is the vibration or like you said, when you go out with an open heart and that's your intention. I think that makes all the difference. If you are going to close yourself off, you know, there's moments for each, but if you're open to it, then I think it's just that human vibration that you do feel in yeah. this whole kind of context of it all. Yeah. 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 I could say one of the last times that I did that was down in Mexico. I lived there last year for three months mm -hmm. and I walked, actually walked in with someone. So it wasn't just me but it was another nomadic friend. Mm -hmm. And I turned to a woman and she happened to be sitting there. She's an amazing woman who's literally doing similar work to me from, from uh, Canada and all the things. But as my friend was doing her, co her um, remote work, mm -hmm. I end up sitting with this woman, having a great conversation for a couple of hours. And again, to this day, we still have conversations. So you just never know. And mm -hmm. yeah, so it's just a really beautiful thing. Oh. very unique that that memory just came to mind because it was so beautiful yeah but it is yeah I think it is just those you never know when you're going to meet people that sometimes people pop into your life and they're all of a sudden there and you feel like they've been there forever even though they might have only been there for a few hours so yeah. true so yeah. true that's another beautiful thing and that that's something I'm super grateful for is the community and the connections that travel affords you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. So it's like, you know, some people come into your, it's a very open, but for a reason, for a season or for a lifetime. And each, I think, mm -hmm. has a very beautiful aspect of it all. And I think each connection, like you say, should be valued as what it is and not put on a weight scale that, oh, it should have been more or it should have been less. Yeah, very true. Very true. We take it for what it is. Sometimes it develops later on. Sometimes, you know, in that instant moment, like you said, it's like fast friends can happen. Yeah. And I've had some of those and I've had the um, uh, the one time conversations that, again, change the trajectory of something for my entire life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, to see the beauty in all of those type of conversations and connections is absolutely amazing. So yeah. and I, I love it that you're. You, you are just an, I feel like an advocate also for, or you're just the way you talk about the community. And yeah, it just, I think it's, we sometimes forget that we're not lone wolves. We should, you know, for connect with others and communicate. But oh, yeah. yeah, so community, so I guess community would be your highlight. What's another highlight that you have around? What do you absolutely love about this lifestyle? One thing for me is I love, I'm obsessed with nature in all mm -hmm. its various forms. <laughs> mm -hmm. So being able to experience nature and for me, the energy of different countries, different settings, it just does something for my personal soul that is unlike anything else. So when I, you and I met, landing in Croatia, putting my feet in the water, even before the conference that we were attending mm -hmm. and I was solo, I literally started to cry and I had not ever really had that reaction to nature and to a setting before. Mm -hmm. So again, to have that experience for the first time there just was something super magical was something about connecting to that land, that country 
that evoke such an emotion. So nature is one thing um, that I really love. Learning, mm -hmm. of course, about the history of new places and also for me, practicing and playing with language. So mm -hmm. I definitely feel like if I dedicated more time to learning languages, I, I would just have so much fun. But learning the basics wherever I go and, and retaining that is really fun for me as well. So, Yeah, but I think that goes such a long way as well, especially also mm -hmm. for, you know, when you are in a country and you just say thank you and hello and even this, this sentence, maybe do you speak English, means so much to the local people that they are a lot more open and willing to even try to have a conversation. With oh, you. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I've seen that for sure. So yeah, it's beautiful. Now, we all know this whole life is not pretty. Or, you know, all, let's say it's pretty and we love it. But it also has its challenges. Let's go that route. What would you say is the challenging part? Pause for a moment in the heart of this episode because there is some exciting news to share. Today we are launching a blossoming tribute to nomadic women featured on the Nomadic Woman podcast. In celebration of each captivating interview, we're launching a retro style t-shirt which carry the names of our remarkable guests, a reminder of the voices that inspire us to explore, dream, and thrive. But here's the twist. It's not just any t-shirt. We'll plug a memorable quote from each of the guests interviewed and add a few favorites and transform it into a delightful flower pun. Add a splash of vintage charm with watercolor hand-painted flowers. This way, with each and every step you take, let the stories of adventure, wisdom, and wanderlust guide you. It is more than just a t-shirt. It is a wearable testament to the spirit of blossoming adventure and empowerment that defines the Nomadic Women podcast. These t-shirts are exclusively available on the Nomadic Women podcast shop hosted by Inca Notes, launching on May 9th. If you use the code BLOOM20, you will get 20% off of your order and you will become a part of our blooming community. Now let's continue to the episode. For you, or mm. difficult, just to be, you know, open and transparent. <laughs> yeah. For me, I, I will say one thing is getting sick when you're on the road. It's really mm -hmm. annoying because then you have to <laughs> find hospitals and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, the constant shifting is also something that, and having to do the research to move to the next destination, that is always a bit of a, not necessarily a pain point. That's why I tend to slow travel personally. Mm -hmm. So I tend to slow travel because I, I work better, better with um, more ease and a smoothness versus chaotic energy of having to bounce around so much uh let's see what else uh with their one of the not having a home base to call your own really like mm -hmm. I do dream of a home base amongst nature and trees and a small quaint town that's my dream <laughs> mm -hmm. but I also know that I want to continue traveling as long as possible so mm -hmm. there's that that, what do they call it? Catch 22. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And while I know I can have a home base and travel, which is the goal in the upcoming year or two, uh, I, I'm not, a, I'm not at that point of knowing where I want to be. So that's another thing, mm -hmm. knowing where I want to be full time, which requires travel and figuring mm -hmm. out what feels good and what country city could potentially work for me. Mm -hmm. So. I feel you so much in that whole capacity, but I think it is that question when you start to go out there, it's not about wanting a home base. It's where do I want the home base? Where do I have that feeling that brings me joy, that yeah. fulfills me, and also have a sense of community that I think in every aspect it is 
very valuable. And like you'd mentioned, I think the, you know, fast travel or slow travel both has the advantages. But with slow travel, I believe you can also just dive deeper into the culture and yeah just get to know how that culture or the people live there how it's different how do I fit in it and maybe even build deeper connections or not but yeah 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 Yeah. building those connections is always a personal choice so Mm -hmm. I think it takes such intention when going to spaces and saying okay I'm going to be here I want to dive deeper like you're saying Mm-hmm. What does that look like for me? And how how do I set my daily life, my monthly life up so that that's happening consistently to where I'm showing up for myself, doing my work, staying creative, but also making time to connect and build community and mm-hmm. bonds. And again, it's it's kind of like starting from scratch a lot of times when you don't know anybody there. So that's yeah. another uh, thing that you have to be okay with. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, yeah, I <laughs> I feel you. Um, but I guess it is also depending on maybe what type of work you do and whatnot. You know, if you do have certain projects, then maybe, you know, especially during a project phase, it's probably not a good idea to move constantly because yeah. or I, I think I personally would feel stressed and overwhelmed with, I think. We all know sometimes that, you know, traveling can be, that's delayed or that's delayed or it doesn't work out how we planned which of course you don't plan with but uh, yeah that's just I think the the challenges that face but I think they're all worth it I just to experience the yeah yeah that's true that's true and you have to find what works for you and sometimes you won't know that until you're actually in the thick of it so mm-hmm. to speak. So sure. you once you get to a city and you say, oh, well, this feels good. Even your accommodations. Oh, this is great. But in the next one, I want X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. Okay, this wasn't great for me because I need silence. So mm-hmm. I'm going to seek out spaces that are a little bit more silent, maybe removed from a city. Mm-hmm. So yes, the whole the whole thing is is really boots on the ground, trying to figure out in real time what mm-hmm. truly works for you as you're navigating. Yeah. as a full-time you know nomadic person yeah it's beautiful mm. so yeah. we uh, you had mentioned before that you before you started this journey you had a little bit of a financial security did you the business that you had before is that the same business you're doing now and how are you or how has that shifted maybe over the countries that you've had or that you've traveled to um do you still do the same? And how do you even earn money on the road? I earn money today by being a coach, a mm-hmm. writer, travel content writer. I do brand collaborations across social media. And in the future, I would love to do things like hosting retreats and in-person events. Mm-hmm. In the past, I started a cleaning company back in 2016 a luxury cleaning company that was based in Los Angeles. I literally started it from scratch and I ran it from my mobile phone and it did really well for the four to five years, a little bit, five years that I was actually running it. Mm -hmm. And from that, I then took a break and started teaching people how to build the cleaning company because Mm -hmm. in my heart of hearts, I knew that I was more of a teacher and it was time to shift from that into the sole work of teaching. And because I knew how to do it very quickly, swiftly, simply. That was the business that I was doing. Mm-hmm. Fast forward to deciding to travel at that point. It had been the pandemic, all the things. And I was getting an itch to travel after being in Los Angeles for five years. I did not live in Los Angeles when I started the cleaning company, which is quite interesting. I was living in Australia. And Mm -hmm. Thailand. And so I was running it from my phone again. I had Mm -hmm. this vision of being kind of a location independent even back then. Mm -hmm. But (laughs) that is what I was doing. And I was able to save a lot. And so when I left, I pretty much lived on savings for the past three years that I was traveling while also building a foundation and a base 
for the new vision that I had as being a full-time speaker, coach, and, you know, community leader. So that is where you find me today in that space as, you know, an online uh, personality. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back a bit before I go Mm -hmm. forward, but I find it really beautiful how you said that you basically, because, you know, a lot of the times we get stuck in maybe how people see you, how you, where you are now. but if you maybe wouldn't have taken that step to teach others how to build a cleaning company, you wouldn't be here today because it was something you felt secure about, something your knowledge is. So even those steps in between are sometimes steps we have to take in order to get where we actually are. And I think that is a very valuable lesson maybe for anybody that is listening. Think about the skills that you have now. What can you use of that? to give others or yeah what are those skills and then to develop what maybe your soul work and your passions really are because for those sometimes we do have to dig a bit deeper yeah Yeah. that's true and I think that goes for the creatives the entrepreneurs and those who are looking to create a life based around what they create versus the you know those who work in the job market so that is something one of my mentors talks about hidden intellectual property. So that is the information knowledge, as you're saying, that you already have within you that you can actually share and turn into a product, a service, an offering for the collective. If you, you know, if you're ready to do that type of work, mm-hmm. there's so much that you already know that other people will pay you for. And yeah. so just knowing that is a beautiful thing like you said and that's that's what's possible and it's very true I think knowing that I wanted to move into the teaching and showing other people how to not just set up a business but I knew eventually that it would turn into coaching them into living beautiful lives and how they could navigate and transform their personal lives but I needed that stepping stone to say let me teach something I already know how to teach understand what that looks like and um, get that teaching under my belt to mm-hmm. say, okay, this is how I'm dealing one-on-one with the student or one-to-many or however it is that I was navigating that space. And it's so true. And I do believe that everything that I've learned, everything that I've created for the last 38 years creatively, because I've always been a creative, mm-hmm. creating my way. I can't say I've technically had a real job <laughs> ever. <laughs> I've literally created my entire way, except for working as a playground supervisor or um, part-time as a personal assistant, very Mm -hmm. briefly. Other than that, it's all been about creative visions that I've had and I've brought to life. So I'm just one of those people that has always lived in that creative space. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, though, that you just, you go, you create what you believe the world needs and then when you're bored with it or you lost interest, you just move on and take what you have learned and move it on. And uh, it does, that takes a lot of courage. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Or, oh yeah. To know when it's yeah. a season to close something yeah. and when it's to start something. And also it takes courage and understanding to know that what the long-term vision is as well. Mm-hmm. So for me, coaching, mentoring, this is the, the long haul mm-hmm. vision. Yeah. However, it decides to pop up teaching people X, Y, and Z is mm-hmm. what I'm here to do for mm-hmm. the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. So it just took time. And it's something that actually I was always naturally doing in my family, community, friendships since I was young. I was always the go-to person for information, for shifting, for changing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I knew that it, all of that would come back around full circle at some point. <laughs> and yeah. here we are <laughs> yeah but you know I mean you have built a community of ra- you 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 like communities and now you've also built your own community more on a sense of what you've already said you coach other as you say sisters soul sisters on their way and I like you had mentioned even this that concept we'll dive into it in a second you can describe what it even is but I think with that you can also grow so much you can shift it in 
so many different areas exactly what you feel like the collective or the soul sisters need and like you said and then can make it the long haul and I think that's beautiful to just build something that you feel so passionate about so oh yeah yeah so your membership is called the golden goddess era membership yes what a powerful name why did you name it and what is it all about well golden goddess era is about literally setting the foundation for a new season of you so this was created it was named golden goddess era based on my company name goddess tapestry so Mm -hmm. the name came to me again just one day goddess tapestry so it really is about creating and weaving as a tapestry is Mm -hmm. all the pieces of your life integrating into what you want it to be Mm -hmm. and so when it came to creating a membership or community I really wanted to lay out foundations where people can move past the fear of starting to truly live an authentic courageous and authentic life that's meant for them how to navigate the fear of starting and getting going that was always something that so many people had the question for not just with travel how do I get started travel? it was really about life how do I now move from a season of I'm doing I'm doing okay but I want to be thriving I want to be shining I want to be really in a space where my life is truly reflective of everything that I want it to truly be and that in and of itself is so personal it's about again knowing who you are what works for you but there's a set of foundations that you can actually utilize and and infuse into your every single day. And it's going to take work. It's not come quick fix, oil change, and you're done. This is about making sure your foundation is super solid every single day of your life. And so mm-hmm. within this community, it's a monthly membership. We go over different concepts, different themes, uh, Q&As, and we just have fun. We have fun. We connect and we learn how to live our most authentic lives together. I think that together is the hardest part or is the, is the yeah. most valuable part because we sometimes believe that we have to find our way ourselves. But, you know, a lot of time in conversations and in, you know, a safe space, which I believe your membership is, You can talk about those topics and nobody's going to judge you for things that you might say, things that you might do or feel, because there's probably someone that has either gone through it or that feels the same or that will go through it. And very true. Very true. And I I teach and speak from experience. So I was the person for many years who held on to the fear of how do I get started? As courageous as I was, there was still something holding me back. And until I let go, surrendered, and started to do the work, show up and share this journey and these lessons, you know, there was there was a stagnation that was existing. So I had to get out of my own way. And again, that's what I preach and tell people and yeah. assist them with getting out of their own way to start moving. That's beautiful. I, I just, I just, I love the way you speak and it's just so, it has just such an inspirational and spiritual, but also very encouraging aura. And it's, I don't know, I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you. <laughs> um, do you have anything on your heart that you feel like you need to share? Mm-hmm. Well, because we're talking about the nomadic journey, I would like to encourage people to start usually, maybe depending on what what your life looks like, you may be nervous. Again, it's about getting to a courageous state from fear to courage. And so I often encourage people to start in your own backyard, maybe take a staycation. Um, what else could I say around this? Start small. Start with something that's doable and manageable. If you are in a state of fear of moving or doing the drastic bold moves like I did as far as selling everything I owned and just picking a country at random. (laughs) So, so, you know, start small. Uh, I would also say when it comes to the nomadic 
journey, make it your own. I always talk about making life and this journey your own. So figure out what suits you, what fits you when it comes to this journey, whether that's van life or whether that's luxury travel, whether it is slow, fast, do what do what suits you. Pick places based on how you want to feel, not because you see them on social media. That's another thing. And that's something um, mm-hmm. that's laughable when I left here and I told my family, <laughs> I said, I'm going to all the places you never heard of. Even the mm-hmm. next destination I'm picking, I'm like, this is the next country. This is the city. Here's a little video, you know, of what it is because they've never heard of it. And for me, it's fun. It's fun mm-hmm. to do that. It's fun to navigate smaller spaces that are absolutely amazing, but under the radar. So, Yeah, I like that. So what other countries other than Albania have you picked that nobody's heard of? Oh, well, I mean, over there in Europe, you guys, of course, know. (laughs) But as an American, (laughs) as an American. I navigated the Balkans, so uh, people may have heard of them, but again, in America, you may not know where they are. So I stayed in Montenegro, Croatia, Bulgaria, North Macedonia, and this next handful of countries that I am deciding to go to, Estonia, Latvia, Georgia, not the state, but the country, you Mm -hmm. know, it's, it's all new territory for me. And for, I would say, like, my family to hear that these places actually exist. I like that you also, on your your own nomadic journey, you take your family with you and, yeah, let them be a part of what what you are experiencing and, you know, be like, hey, you know, these places yeah. do exist. And, you know, even as a European, it is those places. There's probably not, wouldn't be the first places you would visit. Just, they are still, even for a European, a bit off the path. Although it's like 10 times, you know, I don't know, the US fits 20 times at least. Or five times into Europe. That's another whole different conversation. Um, (laughs) But uh, yeah, just like you said, you know. Take your cur- take courage and just follow your own path, and I think that makes it very beautiful. Yeah, that's true. Now, to close this off, as much as I love this conversation, and I feel like we could talk forever about this, we're gonna get mm-hmm. into a few <laughs> rapid fire questions. Just okay. to, I feel like a lot of these we probably have answered, but um, coffee or tea. 100 percent i am uh, a coffee person <laughs> summer or winter summer i live for sunshine it is my favorite thing so waking up even before the sun comes out is something i love mountains or beach mountains for sure the mountains tends to have trees on them. I'm obsessed with trees my entire life. So a mountainous tree filled area suits my soul just fine. Mm. <laughs> uh, pizza or pasta? Pizza, 100%. What's your favorite kind? Uh, I learned about Quattro Formaggi pizza when I was traveling mm-hmm. next to a friend. That has become my favorite. <laughs> but, yeah, it, but sometimes it's it's like it like that. You just find some a new favorite that you wouldn't have experienced if you haven't stepped out of your comfort zone. Um, sunset True. or sunrise? Sunrise, one hundred percent. It is the energy I need for the day. Slow travel or fast paced travel? Slow. I am a slow mad, 100%. (laughs) I like to take life very easy, calm, 
collected and slow is my preferred method. Traveling by plane or road tripping? Mm, road trip. I do love the open road. I don't do it enough, but maybe I would like to do Maybe you should do that more in Europe on your next trip. <laughs> so true. So true. <laughs> uh, suitcase or backpack? Suitcase. I like to leave my back health in good shape. <laughs> Even in high school, I had a roller backpack and people would like to make fun of it, but it's for the sake of my back. <laughs> Like hotel or Airbnb? Airbnb. Quirky, artsy. Love it. And the last one, city or countryside? Countryside. Obsessed with nature. Yeah. I love the countryside. Thank you so much for being on this podcast. Now, tell our listeners where you can where they can find you if they want more information about you, about your community, about your membership, all the deets. For social media, TikTok and Instagram is lumen.grace. That is where you'll find me primarily on TikTok, creating amazing content around life, travel, and courage. You can also check out the membership on lumengrace.com, as well as two other additional membership communities that I've built as well on there oh that's intriguing <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right we'll also have all the, the things in the show notes so uh yeah thank you for listening and we'll hear you next time